opportunity for us to meet and discover new ways for us as civic leaders to promote opportunities for the happiness of our people. And I will argue that this is, in fact, our most important duty. But before we get into that, I would like to take a step back and tell you a little bit more about myself and the city that I'm from, Dubai. You know, in my position, uh, I am in airports more often than I'm at uh, home. And when I'm traveling abroad, anytime I meet someone new, one thing they always ask me, what is Dubai like? More and more, because our city is growing, people have seen images of Dubai in movies like Independence Day, Star Trek, and Mission Impossible. And you see, we have these super skyscrapers and luxury hotels. So you might have a certain impression that this is all what we are about. But these skyscrapers, these hotels, these luxury cars, or what have you, these are not what define Dubai. What defines Dubai is a vision. Where new buildings and new infrastructure, the land that he had rejected was quickly becoming the new heart of the city. And this all happened because Sheikh Rashid had, had a vision for the city that went beyond any constraints that others would put in him. And his son, Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai today, shares the same vision and continues to push us to achieve the impossible. Guided by his son, Sheikh Mohammed, Dubai has continued to practice innovation to bring positive change to the city. I'll give you another story. In 1999, the Sons led uh, a delegation of his senior advisors to, to an undeveloped piece of land on the edge of the desert. From here, he shared a new vision for Dubai to, um, to emerge as the new capital of the knowledge economy in the Arab world. It was the very early days of the internet, but already he saw the potential that this new tool would have for transforming the way we live and work as a city. The, he instructed his advisor that we wanted to open a new region called Dubai Internet City that would attract the world's most innovative companies to come to Dubai and contribute to the next phase of Dubai's transformation. Less than one year <coughs> later, he attended the launch of the first Internet region and already companies like Microsoft, IBM, Cisco, HP were setting up regional office to Dubai, uh, offices in Dubai. Today, there are more than 3,000 companies operating from Dubai Internet City and thousands of startups and entrepreneurs working in the technology sector are contributing to the new apps and services to our city. The designers teach us that the city that doesn't innovate stagnates. We are continually innovating and searching new processes and new tools that can contribute to our vision for Dubai to be, to be the city delivering the best possible experience to every residents and visitors, especially today as the technology around us accelerates at breakneck speed, we are keeping up and embracing the latest innovations that will contribute to our vision. Today we are continuing Dubai's digital transformation into a smart city where all of our city services are available digitally first, and where all of our transactions are paperless, where all city infrastructure is optimized, and to ensure seamless and sustainable experiences wherever you are in our city. Our mission is to use technology to make Dubai the most seamless, safe, and impactful experiences for everyone. So the first question I'm often asked is about Dubai. And I answer that where our city that always looks to the future and we are continually innovating to deliver the best possible life experiences to our people. And the second question I'm asked then is, what is a smart city? And I believe this is the same question when everyone is asking what is happens. There's no definition for these new uh, vocabularies that 21st centuries have. There are many definitions for a smart city. The International Telecommunication Union defines smart city this way. A smart, sustainable city is an innovative city that uses information 
and communication technologies and other means to improve quality of life, efficiency of urban operation and services, and competitiveness while ensuring that it meets the needs of the present and future generation with respect to economy, social, <coughs> environmental, as well as cultural aspects. The EU uses a slightly modified definition of the smart city, and each individual city defines its own smart city program according to their own needs and objectives. At the root of it all, however, is one simple definition, a smart city uses technology to solve problems and improve city experiences. This technology can take many forms, and the problem faced can vary, but the objective remains the same, to use these powerful new tools and our disposal to make our cities function better. Now that one was easy, a more challenging question is why? Why do we have smart city, or why do we build smart cities? In less than three years, Thanks to the contributions of our partners across the city, we have been very successful. We have launched more than 1,200 smart services and initiatives. And so far, we have saved the Dubai government more than $1 billion, thanks to the shared digital services among government entities. But app downloads or money saved doesn't answer the most important questions. And this question is how we are creating happiness. Using technology, we are designing city experiences that are convenient, easy to use, and enjoyable for customers. We are making our city more sustainable and more secure for future generations. And we are leveraging city data to discover insights, improve our decision making, and creating new economic opportunities for entrepreneurs and business owners. But in all of this, we recognize that technology is only a tool. It is a means to an end and our end goal is people's happiness. To guide our smart transformation, we have launched the Happiness Agenda, a science-backed approach to city transformation that prioritizes people's happiness. It is an ambitious agenda spanning uh, around four portfolios to discover, change, educate, and measure our impact on people's happiness. 5% happiness in the city by 2021. We have designed our approach to impact the four physi uh, physiological proven happiness needs, ensuring that we are delivering sustainable happiness for all residents and visitors, not just a quick fix. To address affective and emotional needs, we are providing opportunities that lead to positive emotions and feelings such as fun, joy, and other hedonistic pleasures. To meet our residents' basic needs, we are allowing people the ability to access services in an easy, efficient, convenient, and seamless ways. To address people's cognitive needs, we help people achieve a high sense of well-being and satisfaction with their lives. And finally, to support people's deeper needs, we support people in engaging in, in meaningful activities that maximize their sense of purpose and pleasure. And through the happiness agenda, we are pursuing 16 programs and their four portfolios and a growing number of projects and initiatives as we expand our collaborative efforts across the city. Today we are working with a network of 40 happiness champions from 36 government and private sector entities even including our policy force and civil defense entities. Our goal is to expand this program to encompass all government entities and any private sector partners who want to join with us. As happiness champions, these young men and women are the drivers of our happiness agenda, and they're leading each of their entities to adopt a new mindset that places people's, people's happiness as their number one priority for every new initiative or a project, from a tourism campaign to a new public development to how you pay your utility bill. In the past two years of the Smart Dubai Initiative and the Happiness Agenda, we have already seen many new services and initiatives throughout the city supporting our vision to make Dubai the happiest city. 
In order to become the happy city, we knew that we would need a way to listen to everyone in the city and understand their current levels of happiness with city services. We launched the happiness meter, the first citywide tool capturing customer satisfaction data at every interaction uh, touch point with the city. The first happiness meter was implemented in February 2015. And today, the platform is open for all government and private sector entities in Dubai. With the data gathered through the happiness meter, we are able to introduce new programs to increase happiness across the city and measure the impact towards achieving our vision. Just last month, we conducted the first corporate, uh, we conducted the first happiness hackathon held at the Dubai International Airport to discover new solutions to increase the happiness of every tourist who visits our city. Working with an international team of expert hackers, our happiness champion designed functioning prototypes of four new solutions to improve the tourism experience in Dubai, utilizing emerging technologies, including virtual reality and artificial intelligence. Last week, we graduated the first class of participants in the Corporate Happiness Diploma Program, which we are running in partnership with the Rochester Institute of Technology in their Dubai campus. The program teaches essential skills for positively impacting happiness in the workplace, whether it is internally or externally and is arming uh, our young citizens with the right tools to continue to work towards our vision of happiness for our city. And because we cannot accomplish our vision by working alone, we are collaborating with our partners in every sector of the city, driving new services and solutions that adopt the latest technology innovations to deliver delightful experiences for our residents and visitors guided by our happiness agenda. <coughs> This service allows shippers to easily find a reliable transporter matching their cargo transportation requirements and help transporters fill ideal capacities and maximize the truck utilization. The system benefits the transporters by providing them with the leads for new jobs, gives them the flexibility to provide detailed quotes to the cargo owner and receive their payments upon confirmation of completed jobs. It's allowed the transportation company with visibility and control of their driver's assignments via a simple app for the drivers. An application that will manage the, will manage the food safety and nutrition related functionalities with defined services for different users. Consumers can log into the system and find out information about restaurants, their inspection grade, details about food, nutrition, and etc. The system will also collect information about all the persons in charge of food establishments, their training details, menu and processes. The system will be capable to providing big data analysis as far as food concerned. No card payment. This is a transportation card. That link that we can pay for it for all of our uh, uh, transportation channels whether it is a metro, buses, taxi, and water transportation. Not only this, it's become the cash part of the city, wherein you can enter museums, parks, and also you can buy from grocery or buy a cup of coffee in Dubai. We've also launched charging stations for our electrical vehicles in Dubai. Today we have more than 129 uh, electrical vehicle charging stations all over the city. Our smart gates in our airports. It is very easy entry and exit uh, tools for whoever is ha uh, having an Emirates uh, ID uh, or uh, electrical uh, passport, but not only for uh, Emirates citizens, for more than 38 nationalities. Dubai Silicon Waste Authority facility, uh, facility management team installed sensors in garbage bins in 2014 that would send alerts when the bin was full and needed emptying. With this new technology, garbage collection vehicles would take trips to empty the bins only when it is full, thus reducing their total number of overall trips, leading to lower operating costs and reduction in CO2 emissions. We have been in our journey to making Dubai a smart city for several years now. Already we have begun to feel substantial impact towards improving quality of life. And just in the, in the latest uh, report, uh, 
uh, of uh, WEF, uh, of actually Mercer, uh, Mercer Report. UAE is ranked number one as uh, uh, quality of life. From our initiatives and from the work of our strategic partners and establishment, all these uh, ranking being increased in our city and in our country. And I'm proud to share a few of these highlights with you. Over 1,000 happiness meters have been installed by government and private sector partners. And we have recorded over 6 million votes from customers across the city, achieving a happiness index of 90% for Dubai in 2016. And yes, this is uh, a satisfaction survey, which we call it happiness meter. But under the umbrella of happiness meter, we have many other models. Earlier this, this year, we commissioned a report to investigate the true impact of the dedicated work of the Smart Dubai government team. We now have a dollar figure that we can put to, uh, to the benefits that Smart Dubai government has created for the government. We now know that Smart Dubai government has saved Dubai 4.3 billion dirhams, more than 1 billion dollars over 13 years. Thanks to the shared services, the Dubai government currently saves 6 dirhams, or about 2 dollars for every 25 cents spent by Smart Dubai. And as a smart technology continues to enhance efficiency in government services, we see these savings continuing to increase. 2015 recorded the highest cost to saving ratio yet. <coughs> we know that people in Dubai are happy today. Measured utilizing the control ladder methodology, <coughs> we have found that 83% of people in Dubai consider themselves happy. And even more importantly, we have discovered that people in Dubai are very optimistic about their future happiness. 95% of people surveyed responded that they believe they will be even happier in the next five years. In fact, one in five people we survey say they will be living their best possible life in 2021. Our challenge and our responsibility as a city is to continue to use every tool at our disposal to help our residents achieve their goals for 95% happiness by 2021. Thank you everyone and I hope that I could explain and showcase some of our work that's been done in Dubai. You have 10 million people of which 8 million are from outside. How do you include them in this work of yours? That's the first question. Um, we also think in Bhutan that we need to balance both spiritual and material well-being. What we see here is totally the material side. What are you doing with the spiritual side of it? And then the second question is, um, no, I can't leave it to that. <laughs> it might be too much to ask. But I had the opportunity to take around um, Her Excellency Ahu yes. in Bhutan uh, for four days. So I got some ideas about you, but now seeing it in reality on the screen gives me a lot of hope. But what is the plan B? For example, if, you know, your digital world fails. What happens to the immigrants? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Actually, it's, a, it's been a pleasure also to receive your Prime Minister in Dubai last month during the World uh, Government Summit. And uh, you talked about what you do for the mixed nationalities you have in your country. Actually, we have almost 206 nationalities in, in UAE and in Dubai. Uh, yes, our population is 10 million, and almost 1 million is national from UAE, and the rest are uh, expats who are there either uh, to work or to invest. And we put our plan, we didn't say this is only for our national. We said this is for all residents in Dubai, not only residents, because we receive on a yearly basis almost 20 million visitors. So it's also cover our visitors and their needs. And when you ask about what are we doing with this spiritual component, yes, we are responsible of digitizing uh, our city. But with the happiness agenda, we believe that Happiness is measurable and happiness is attainable. That's why under the portfolio of Educate, under our happiness agenda, what we do is we educate people how to prioritize happiness. Being Muslims, we have a very interesting spiritual uh, uh, activities we do. 
but not everyone is Muslim in, uh, in UAE or in Dubai. That's why we embrace all faiths in, in, uh, in our country. And we've been known as a tolerance country. That's why we have actually announced last year two different ministries, Ministry of Happiness and Ministry of Tolerance, to make sure also we balance these uh, spiritual uh, uh, aspects of our life. And what is our plan B if everything fails down as a digital life? I believe if my daughter hear this, she will become crazy because for our for the young generation, they live virtually. Uh, but yes, we need to do all the plan B and plan C to make sure that all our technologies is backed up. And that's what we have done in Dubai with, the, with our uh, disaster recovery uh, plans and with our resilience strategy to make sure even if there is a failure in one area, we can uh, reload and upload all our system back again. Uh, we cannot say that we will shut down everything and we'll go back again to live uh, our previous lives, like uh, my grandmother always telling us. She's a Bedouin, she came from the desert, she lived all her life in her small uh, village in the desert. And she's not happy with whatever we have today. Uh, like I'm traveling without uh, any companion, I'm not covering my face, and I'm speaking with everyone, and, uh, and this is not, uh, this is overwhelming for her, and she always dreamed to go back again to the small village, to the very peaceful desert domes. So this is not happen. We need to embrace that, and this is one of our activities also to bring elder generation with us to embrace uh, the digi digital world that we have. And there are a lot of activities, especially around educate them, around communication tools. And now my grandmother has a Snapchat account that she can put <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>